in this video I am going to share with you some ideas for your players when they come across that town or city to stay in. So get those city passes ready, pick out a suitable tavern and let's get going. Hello and welcome to this Gibbering GM video. In these videos I like to share ideas for other GMs like yourself because I know how busy we all are and any help is always appreciated. Although your players might enjoy delving into dungeons or clearing out a graveyard, the local town or city can present many options for the players and the GM to engage with with respect to encounters and interactions. If you are not already familiar with it, I do have an online RPG shop, link in the description below. And there I share some possible encounters that can happen in a town, city or anywhere. But in this video, I want to stick with activities that you can use to entice your players with. Many of which will allow those characters to use those maybe less often used skills that are not attached to combat. Oh, and remember to stay right to the end of the video because I have a special encounter idea that you can use that works perfectly in a town or city. Okay, first activity, getting to know the guards. So every town or city has the local guards or the law enforcement agents. The people who look after the law abiding citizens and prevent those unlawful people committing nasty acts. Now, how the party interact with the guards can actually dictate what might happen during their stay in the town. A positive relationship might make a source of information and gossip, while a negative interaction or relationship could result with the party getting arrested and possibly imprisoned. In our Mithras campaign, Bartleby has developed his own skill called Friends of the Guards. It really helps him when strange things are happening in Lindo and he needs to access that local gossip. Next up, in for the night. So once the party has gained access to the town, the next task on their agenda is to probably find a place to stay. Now, I actually have a document on World Anvil that gives me some names for taverns that I can use at a moment's notice. If you're not familiar with World Anvil, then I'll link a video to how I use it in the description and on the screen somewhere. Now, as well as the names for the taverns, for example, the Hairy Hobgoblin, I also like to give each tavern a rating. Now this could be a simple star rating, but I actually like and prefer to give it a percentage rating. This is the percentage chance of something negative happening in the inn or tavern. So if a tavern has a 99% rating, this would probably be a tavern that you are not looking forward to staying the night in because the chance of something negative happening is 99%. On the other side of the coin, if the tavern has a 1% rating, then you know that you can probably have a good night's sleep there. So with the party in the town and in a safe environment to sleep, third thing on my what can you do in a city activity list relates to shops and stalls. So no matter what the reason for visiting a town and a city, there is an opportunity to shop and many players and characters might find this irresistible. This is when haggling and bartering can come into play. And I made a rules video relating to this if you're interested set using the Mithras rule set. But there are plenty of skills in every single rule set that you can use to support this interaction. 
where there's a persuasion skill and an insight skill, then there's the possibility of good trading interactions. Of course, this might bring the party into contact with the local merchant guild, whether this is just to interact with them or to complete some jobs or tasks for them. Or it might be that the party are actually fiddled out of a huge amount of money by the guild. Or they find that that magical item that they bought is not magical at all. So while the party are shopping and sleeping and enjoying town life, the other aspect that they could engage with are with thieves and thugs. And this is my number four. No town or city is without a thieves guild. This could be a well-formed guild of thieves and informants throughout the whole town, or just a local band of thugs who think that they're in control. Interactions with these groups do, does not have to be negative, although being attacked on the streets in the dead of night does sound inviting for any GM. The party might have already come across members of the Thieves Guild, since there might have been an arrangement for them to actually enter the town. They might have met someone selling town patch passes at a, a huge price and might have bought them to actually get in. However, whatever they're actually planning on doing in the town, if it's illegal, then it's always beneficial to have the permission of the Thieves Guild. And I'm sure you can think of some very interesting encounters for the party to complete to gain that, that permission. But not all characters are nasty and evil. Some of them prefer the final things in life. And this is when my idea number five of what to do in a city comes into play. Nobles and parties. So at the other end of the continuum from the Thieves Guild, we have the nobles and their social parties. These are for those party members who would like to make their mark in society and give themselves a name and become one of the high class social classes and demonstrate their wealth and political intrigue. Attending parties can also link to the party having to go shopping and getting suitable attire and of course, this also allows the players access to a different source of gossip and intrigue. There is also the possibility that they might end up being romantically attached to someone or even arranged. Come to think of it, why didn't I mention that in the thieves and thugs section? Yeah, romance is out there for everyone. Again, Interacting at these parties and the, uh, with the nobles allows opportunities for those non-combat skills to be used. And the party will suddenly realise why that charisma attribute is really important. Well done, you've got to this part of the video. So here's a little bit of bonus content for you. Imagine what a town or city would be like if there was a monster invading people's dreams and causing nightmares. That could eventually drive everyone mad. Well, the Dream Stalker encounter describes such a situation and is available for free in the RPG shop. Worth taking a look or maybe you're already under the control of the dream stalker and this is all a dream huge thanks for all your support i've survived my first year making content to support my part-time work so thank you however you support these videos i really do appreciate it until next time this is the gibbering GM returning to his campaign. Stay creative.
and happy GMing. See ya. Bye.